Hey guys, what's up? It's Patrick it's, uh, from Fight Prof. And what I wanted to do was a different type of video today. I wanted to do a fight breakdown slash prediction type of video. And what I wanted to do it on was the Demetrius Johnson versus Wilson Ray's fight that's happening well today when I upload this video. And I just wanted, this is the first time I've done a video like this, and I just wanted to try something new, just like uh, give my thoughts on big fights that are coming up or UFC pay per view events, stuff like that. So I guess I'm just gonna hop right into it. So Demetrius Johnson, the flyweight champion, versus Wilson, Wilson Reyes. So I'm gonna start with the striking, and the biggest difference between Demetrius Johnson and Wilson is that DJ. He's a stand shifter, which means that he's always constantly switching from orthodox and southpaw. Yeah, so DJ, he's a stand, sh uh, stand shifter. That means that he's always switching between orthodox and southpaw stance when he's on the offense, which means that his attacks are going to be coming from a bunch of different angles, which makes it really confusing for the person who's getting attacked, his opponent, to deal with different circumstances. Because getting jabbed by an orthodox Stance is way different from somebody throwing a left hand in a southpaw stance because a jab is more like a flicking out, you know, uh, distance maintainer, while a left hand in southpaw is a power strike. And some key, the, the two key elements of Demetrius's uh, offense is that he'll usually, when his opponents are circling out, what he'll do is the shifting right hook. So he'll be in orthodox stance. And as his opponent shift, uh, starts to circle up to his left, he'll step out, switch into southpaw, and cut off the whole ring, like cut off the, the octagon, and land a southpaw right hook, which is a really effective weapon for cutting off the rings and catching opponents as they're trying to cut, uh, try to get away from you on the offense. So yeah, so another staple of the Demetrius Johnson offense is that He'll throw a rear legged kick from either orthodox or softball, it doesn't matter. And as he lands the kick back behind it, he'll throw in a lead hook. So as his opponent is following him after the kick, they're trying to catch him. As he steps down, he's gonna throw a lead hook and it catches off, it catches a lot of people off guard. And so that's DJ, but Wilson Race, what he is is a southpaw and he mostly fights on the counter. And the reason why he fights mostly on the counter is that where he wants the bout to go is onto the ground because he's an expert on the ground. And so what he'll do is he'll be fighting southpaw and he'll he'll let opponents come into him come to him and as his opponents throw something, he'll take the opportunity to strike. That's when he'll gonna throw his counter strikes. And what he does using these counter strikes is that these counter strikes let him achieve his takedowns a lot more easier. So his or he'll be backing up, backing up, and as his opponent swings at him and exposes their hips, he'll actually shoot for a takedown. And the reason why he does that is because in MMA or even in wrestling, shooting a takedown just in the middle of the mat is extremely hard. Especially if it's a takedown with no setup. Basically, you're covering like, I don't know, three feet of distance, trying to shoot at your opponent's hips, and that gives opponents a lot of time to react. They got a bunch of time to throw their hips back, sprawl, put their hands on all over you, push you down, and shuck off the takedown. The reason why Wilson is so great at getting the takedowns is that he's not shooting just naked takedowns. What he does is that he's fighting on the counter, and his opponent is swinging at him mid swing. They're about to throw like a right hand or, or a left hook or something, he'll actually shoot underneath it and get on the hips a lot easier. It gives them basically a delayed reaction to trying to chuck off the takedown. If the opponent is moving forward and Wilson shoots for the takedown, they're closing the distance for him. He doesn't have to shoot past those three feet of distance where they can react. They're closing the distance for him and their reaction time is gonna be off completely and he can close that distance a lot easier when it comes to getting the takedown. Another way that Wilson will have an opportunity to take the takedown is that he'll have him, he'll have his opponent between him and the cage. So his opponent is basically pinned against the cage. And what he'll do is actually uh, do some clinch work, some boxing and stuff like that. 
and then he'll get the trip along the takedown because the reason why it's a lot easier to get a takedown along the fence, uh, the, the cage is in the way of you moving back and getting your hips backwards, right? So when you're fighting off the takedown, you're sh the only way you can fight it off is by shifting your hips left and right. And that's going to be a lot harder to fight off the takedown than just shooting your hips backwards and pressing your weight all down on your opponent's head. So he'll have his opponents along the fence and what he'll actually do is that he'll get both his hands tied underneath his opponent right like underneath their their ass and then he'll pull and scoop them up and then drop them along the cage. His two main ways of getting the takedown is through either fighting on the counter and as his opponents close the distance he'll shoot underneath shoot underneath their exchange or he'll have them along the fence and then scoop them up and drop them on the Alright, so on the striking matchup, basically we have a softball who likes to counter and shoot for takedowns as he gets in exchanges with his opponents and a stance, uh, stance shifter, Demetrius, who has op his offense because he's switching stances all the time creates a bunch of unique angles and different situations that his opponents can't always have the same answer to as well as stance shifting actually covers a lot distance and a lot more distance than just plodding forward in a normal like in a traditional stance like if you're an orthodox basically the only way you're going to move forward is that you have to take small steps forward with your lead leg as your right leg is brought upward uh, behind it but when you're stance shifting it's like almost like you're stepping or lunging so you can cover a lot more distance, a lot more quicker than regular, just staying in your regular stance. Now, stance switching is, uh, it's pretty hard to get it off, like doing it right, because a lot, what you'll see is that most of the time, stance switchers in boxing or MMA, what they'll do is that they'll be comfortable fighting orthodox and they'll be comfortable fighting southpaw. They're not, flowing into the other stances so like for example they'll be fighting orthodox and to confuse their opponent they'll step back and now they're fighting southpaw for the next three minutes so those are like switch that's like stance switching but the stance switch i'm talking about is with demetrius johnson like every second he'll be in a different stance he'll be throwing combinations from orthodox step out in southpaw hit one punch off southpaw and then he'll step back and back and be back into orthodox and just vice versa and Stat switching is awesome, but it's not perfect. It has a drawback. And what the drawback is is that as you're stand switching, you have to bring your legs level with each other, as if you're just standing square. And the danger about this is that it, it doesn't take much to knock you off balance. So if you're caught mid-stand, uh, if you're caught mid-switch by a punch or a kick or anything like that, there's a good chance that you're gonna be knocked over or knocked down. And an example of this would be uh, TJ Dillashaw versus John Dodson. TJ, he's also a stance, stance shifter and he actually got caught mid stance by John Dodson, right? And the danger about this is that TJ fell over and John being like super fast, fast and quick, he jumped on TJ and if you rewatch the fight, it doesn't look like TJ is out, like he's not knocked out or anything, but he's just really out of position. And the ref saw this as being unable to fight, and he stopped the fight. So DJ, he throws up the rear kick naked, and the reason why this is dangerous is because, one, because that's the slowest like, strike you can throw. The rear the rear leg kick, or the rear kick, because it covers the longest distance, and the opponent can see it coming. And now, the reason why this could be a danger with Wilson is because Wilson is always looking for the takedown. If Demetrius throws it, and all Wilson has to do is try to catch it because it's such a it's like the slowest uh, bunch of the strikes. He can try catching it and then go for uh, like a single leg takedown or knock over uh, Demetrius and achieve the takedown. So that's the that's something that I have seen in D DJ's arsenal that's kind of worrying that he can throw up the leg kick, but he'll just throw a, a kick without a setup and he gets caught and knocked over on it a bunch. Or sometimes he'll throw it and then it'll just ride up the opponent's leg and the opponent will catch it, scoop it up and then take it down, take him down. But because Wilson is a southpaw and if DJ throws it from an orthodox stance, it's not as dangerous because uh, if he throws it from orthodox and Wilson is in the southpaw, it's just gonna 
is just in this open gap underneath Wilson's ribs essentially. But if he's in southpaw and he throws it, then uh, Wilson has a better chance of catching it because the kick step for going into exposed ribs is going toward his arm and his back. So he has a lot more chance of scooping it up and taking him down off of that. All right, so now going on to the ground game, let's we'll say they end up on the ground and it's a grappling match. Grappling is Wilson's A game. But what Wilson does is that he actually loves to go to, he likes to get to half guard and then use a bunch of different varieties of half guard passes to get to either a position where he can hit the arm triangle or he can uh, take the opponent's back and work for a rear naked choke. And so what Wilson will do is that he'll get an opponent down, land in let's say the full guard, and what he'll do to get from full guard to half guard is something called the Reyes Pass. It's named after him because he's so good at it. And so what uh, the Reyes Pass essentially is, is that he'll... So essentially what the Reyes Pass is, is that uh, he's in full guard and they'll get the half guard. Basically he'll set his weight onto his opponents, uh, switch his hips, so he'll uh, switch his... He'll throw his uh, right leg over, He'll switch his right leg and his left leg, so his, there's still his weight pushing down on his opponent. He'll use his left arm to strip his opponent's uh, guard. So when they have a, their legs wrapped around wrist, what he'll do is like he'll use his left arm to strip the opponent's ankle off him, and then step over with his left leg into half guard. And from there, he'll hit any like a different number of half guard passes. And what he'll work toward is the arm triangle, or he'll. Uh, the opponent will try to roll out of the position or try to regain guard and he'll switch to back control and he'll take the back and then work for the choke from there. Demetrius Johnson on the other hand is he's like no he's not a slouch on the ground too like he's actually he'll hit like different sweeps and stand-ups and stuff like that when he's on his back but uh, what you'll see most often is that he'll hit uh, technical stand-ups and he hits really simple ones. So what he'll do is that when somebody is when he's in some somebody is in his full guard, he'll throw in the butterfly hooks, use his shins to elevate his opponent up, place his feet on the opponent's hips, kick out, and then post up on one arm and then stand up. Right. So it's going to be really interesting to see if uh, Demetrius is going to be able to be uh, is going to be able to get on those get those uh, butterfly hooks inserted and then try to get up, or if Wilson is going to have his weight on the ground and uh, be basically cutting through all of Demetrius' guards. And if Demetrius hits the takedowns on Wilson, Wilson is also pretty explosive off his back. He hits sweeps and uh, stand-ups pretty regularly. If it does hit the ground, what I feel like is either going to happen is that both of them, uh, Demetrius or Wilson, is just going to get up almost immediately. Or what's going to happen is that Demi uh, Wilson is going to be basically passing Demetrius' guards. All right, so we covered striking and the grappling, but the biggest factor I think that's going to be a part of uh, that's going to affect this match is that Wilson has not been in a five-round fight and hasn't gone past the third round since 2008, and Demetrius Johnson has gone to he's gone to a five-round decision I think like eight times in the last nine years, eight years. So Demetrius Johnson is well adapted to fighting five rounds, right? Like we've seen him, like he, he keeps a, the same pace throughout all five rounds. And it's gonna, I'm just curious to see if Wilson is gonna be prepared for it. So essentially the difference between three rounds and five rounds is that a three round is basically a sprint and then a five round is a marathon. So you have to pace yourself. And it doesn't matter how much of a technical technician you are, or how well your strategy is working out for you. Once you get start getting tired and fatigue is coming in, like your game plan is gonna start going down the gutter. Like you're not gonna be thinking straight and it's gonna be a lot harder to maintain your strategy throughout the whole match. And somebody who's well adapted five rounds, like Demetrius, who's able to keep the pace, that's when like he'll be able to start crushing it essentially. So Demetrius, he's been once it starts getting to the fifth round, he's basically taking everybody. Uh, the, uh, once it gets past the third round, he starts taking people up to town because they're not experienced enough to be dealing with that. Especially since Wilson, last time he fought, 
a five round was in 2008 and it was in a actual talent it was in a regional circuit where you basically usually regional circuits you usually fight bumps and stuff like that people who, who are just trying MMA to see if it's for them and Demetrius has been doing against the top flyweights in the world for the last eight years so that is the biggest thing that I believe is going to affect the fight the fact that Demetrius is a marathon runner and Wilson has been fighting like a sprinter the last couple of fights, uh, his like whole UFC career essentially. And that's where I think Demetrius is gonna have the advantage that he's the, if it goes past the, it goes past the third round, I think it's all Demetrius from there. He just has the experience and he has the actual ability to go five rounds at a very consistent pace, whereas Wilson, we've never seen him pass the third round. All right, so yeah, that's my breakdown of the fight. Uh, the way I see it is that Wilson, you're going to see him come out and he's going to be fighting on the counter trying to hit the takedowns, trying to, uh, he'll be fighting on the counter and waiting for DJ to uh, miss time a swing or get into an exchange and hit the takedown from underneath him. And if they get to the ground, you're either going to see Wilson hitting a bunch of passes or Demetrius and Wilson just scrambling really quickly back to their feet. But, I mean, once it makes it to the end of the third round, fourth round, fifth round, it's, I feel like it's just going to be Demetrius Johnson. Wilson's chances are a lot better in the third, in the first three rounds than in the last two rounds. All right, guys, that was uh, my prediction uh, slash breakdown video of Demetrius Johnson versus Wilson Ways. It's my first time doing a video like this, and hopefully, I can cut out the stutters and all the nervousness and stuff like that. And hopefully, next time I do a video like this, it'll be delivered a lot better. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video, um, I'm gonna try doing videos like this every time there's a big event in boxing, MMA or kickboxing, mostly MMA, and uh, hopefully I'll get better at it, cut it down, cut down all the stutters and stuff like that. So please uh, like the video, comment down below what your thoughts are about the video, and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, thank you.